On Monday, May 10th, 2004, at 1.07 p.m., the last Mustang rolled off the production line at the Dearborn assembly plant. It was a 2004 Mustang GT premium convertible with the IUP interior upgrade package and a 5-speed Tremec TR3650 manual transmission. And of course the two valve 4.6 liter V8. There were over 1,000 people there for this celebration. Most of them were workers who had worked at the plant. In the front seat was Oscar Hofsapien who was the man who drove the very first Mustang off the Dearborn plant in 1964. More than 6.7 million Mustangs had come out of the Dearborn plant. And waiting at the end of the line was a white convertible 1964 Mustang, which happened to be the very first Mustang off the line. I believe this Mustang was actually owned by an airline pilot who didn't even know the significance of the car for several years and Ford tracked it down and bought it back from him. The VIN number of the last Mustang ended in 242598. Something very interesting about the last day of production as well is that all the Mustangs that day were white. And that's pretty cool because when I saw the new 2005 Mustang GT in the showroom at Ford, I noticed that right next to it in the showroom was one of the last clearance Mustangs and it happened to be a white V6 Mustang. I remember looking over it and thinking, I'd rather have the new Edge. Now something extremely interesting about the last Mustang was how hard it was to make this red convertible the last Mustang. There is a very interesting story behind all this. To make the last Mustang is extremely difficult because there are so many different variations of what the last Mustang would be. You have the last Mustang, the last Cobra, the last Mach 1, the last GT, the last red car, the last black car. Um, there were a lot of variables that went into it. And to make things even more complicated, a lot of cars get pulled from the side when they have certain options that aren't in stock. There are things that make it so that a car that started before several other cars will end up last. Some cars are even damaged and held off the assembly line and repaired. It was said that one car that might be the last out of the body shop might be 20 units ahead in the paint plant and then end up 5 units from the very end in the trim and chassis department. So the plant manager Rob Weber had a, a plan that him and his team could carry out to get this last GT through the line and end up at the end of the production. Now this car was going to be ordered internally by Ford so it could be put on display at the new Dearborn Rogue Visitor Center. So this GT would be started a few weeks before the end of production and then when the car was painted and ready to go the shell was put in a plastic bag, a ginormous plastic bag, and it was held off the assembly line while hundreds of other Mustangs were produced after it. Then it would be pulled back out, put on the assembly line, and run through as the very last Mustang made. Something I found extremely interesting were the last four colors made were dark shadow gray, then black, then silver metallic, then oxford white. So there was a sea of white Mustangs at the very end when they were putting together this GT. Something really interesting too was the cars were built and finished in the order of complexity. So the Cobras were finished and then the Mach 1s were finished and then the GTs were finished and then it was down to the V6 cars that were produced last. So there were many things that made it difficult for this GT to be the last car produced. There are 24-hour um, waiting periods when a car is painted before it goes to trim and chassis. There's all sorts of different things that happen with different uh, A pillars, C pillars, you know, convertible, you know, um, and so it's just really cool to to know that this wasn't just the last car that went down the line and they just you know, sent it off. It was actually quite a production and you can tell the people who worked together on this were all excited. They were happy, they were cheering, they were giving each other hugs. You can watch a video on YouTube about it that's um, taken by one of the workers there and everybody was just excited. So,
Here's some pictures of the car as it went through the line. You can see the wheels there. Those were the uh, premium wheels that were the same as the 01 Cobra, which appeared on the 03 and 04 GT premiums. Um, lots of really cool options. You can see the polished exhaust tips there from the uh, premium package. Like I said, it was an interior upgrade package car, so you could see the silver door pins. You could see the bullet style pedals. Um, you could see the silver trim around the radio bezel there and the big headrests like the Cobras and Bullets Mach 1's had. So I'm sure it was a very bittersweet time for the workers. They were all going to a different plant getting rid of the Mustang. Dearborn's where all the Mustangs were made. You could see the workers signing the big board there and the cool posters here of the original Mustang to the new edge. And these are just some of the last of the uh, production line pictures and pictures of everybody at the end with the car when it was complete. So anyway, I thought this was a really cool story and this is a really cool car. I don't know where it is now. I, I'm sure some collector has it somewhere. Um, but it's really cool to see it. And I'm, I'm glad it was a 5-speed. I think it's cool that it was at least a 5-speed car. Um, you would have thought it would have been a Cobra or a Mach 1 or something too. So very interesting that they chose it to be a Red Fire Mustang GT. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really enjoyed making these videos. I enjoy the stories behind these cars, and I thought this was a very important car to talk about. It was the last New Edge Mustang technically made, and it was um, a very special day at the Dearborn assembly plant. There's so much that goes into making these cars that we don't even understand, and there's other cool videos on YouTube. I'll try to put the links to the videos here in the description so you can see how these cars were made and some of the things they go through. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and uh, please subscribe and like these videos.